Hello and welcome. This is Faceless Opinion, currently on the hunt for the City of Gold, welcoming you back to another video. A while ago, I got the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection and have been playing back some of the old games, which would be Drake's Fortune, Among Thieves, and Drake's Deception. Now, while playing the first game again after who knows how many years, I realized that's actually a pretty good game. Is it the best in the series? No, that goes to Uncharted 2 without question but would say that the first one is probably, for me anyways, in the silver medal spot. One of the reasons why I say that is because it introduces a memorable character who I say is one of my favorite characters in the franchise overall, that being Eddie Raja. It's a shame that he died though. But what if he didn't? Let's do a little thought experiment, or as the kids call it, a what if. What if Eddie Raja didn't die in Uncharted's Drake's Fortune? But before we can do that, we need some context on who Eddie Raja is. Eddie is the tertiary antagonist of the game, who is hired by Gabriel Roman and Atak Navarro to secure the island where El Dorado is on and to kill Drake. However, neither of those ended up happening. Personally, I found Eddie more interesting compared to either Roman or Navarro, as he had a lot of charm and had a personal grudge against Drake. You can see the chemistry with each of their interactions, my favorite being with them in the heart of the treasure vault. Crap. Drake, if we don't make it out of here, I just want you to know, I hate your guts. Yeah, likewise, pal. Now let's do this. Not to mention, Eddie's pirates were the more commonly encountered enemy, unlike the mercenaries that come in later. Not to mention, this man was sporting a gold skin gun, so you know that this man is a certified baller. But enough about me hyping up my boy, let's get down to the actual what if. Now obviously during chapter 17, Eddie originally gets killed by one of the descendants while he and Drake were in the treasure vault, when Eddie got grabbed by one of them and essentially fell into the abyss. No, not that abyss. Instead, in this scenario, Drake was able to save Eddie, and the two of them would keep fighting off the swarm of descendants until Elena got the hoist to work, in which both of them would climb the rope and then hightail it from their monstrous pursuers until they reached the bunker and barricade the door. Since Eddie is incredibly superstitious, as he did state earlier that this island is cursed, he is, understandably, freaking out. And that point, a truce would be made between the both of them. And it would be at this point where we kind of reach a divergent path in our story. At the start of the bunker sequence, it requires Drake to make a far jump to escape the room that he and Elena were in so that he could restore power to the bunker. I think it is fair to say that Elena would not be able to make this jump here as she couldn't do so in the original game. The question I bring up here is, would Eddie be able to make that jump? To be honest, I'm not sure as we have never seen Eddie do any type of climbing. With his climbing skills in check, for me, I'm not sure that he could pull off a jump like that, meaning that Drake would be on his own while exploring the bunker, like he was in the original game. However, this leads to a big problem, and that would be that Eddie, along with Elena, get captured by Roman and Navarro. And I feel like in this situation, they would end up just offing Eddie due to them being on bad terms, as Roman more or less fired Eddie due to his failure a few chapters earlier. And the fact that he's aligned with Drake... Yeah, I don't see how Eddie's getting out of this situation. Is that it then? Eddie survives being grabbed by a descendant only to be taken out by Navarro of all people. It looks like it. No, I'm not gonna end it here. This video is called What If Eddie Raja Survived? God damn it, Eddie Raja lives! Right, so let's say that Eddie has the acrobatic chops compared full to Nathan Drake. He follows him through the bunker, and obviously he would be terrified, which would make sense since that sequence is designed to invoke fear in the player. So with him, the narrative tension would be reduced to a certain degree, and I feel like that with the two of them and the amount of MP40 scattered around, I think the Descendants are not going to pose a threat. Now, when it comes to the El Dorado reveal, where they watch the projector showing a German soldier transforming, Eddie will more than likely make a comment saying that he was right and the island was cursed and expressing he wants out of this place, which, yet again, is understandable. So fast forward to exiting the bunker, Drake and Eddie meet up with Sully and tell him what happened while on their way to a save Elena, meaning that Sully won't be as shocked when he sees the Ascendant since it's more than likely Eddie would have mentioned that and still want to get off this island. 
As for the finale, it's going to play out the same as originally did with Drake and Navarro having their showdown. The only big difference being that Sully isn't alone and has Eddie with him. At the end, you'll see Sully pull up on the boat showing off the treasure, stating that he took it from pirates, while Eddie would be like, Hey, that isn't your gold, it's mine! But since you guys saved my ass, I'm more than willing to give you guys a cut. Thus ending Uncharted 1. Now, would Eddie make an appearance in future titles? I mean, it is possible, but wouldn't be a major character of relevance, more like a cameo appearance for a chapter or two. For example, if he lived, I could see him showing up in Uncharted 2 during the Borneo portion of the game. I mean, he is an Indonesian pirate, and Borneo is in Indonesia, so I can see him tag along for that part. I can also see a possible scene of him, Drake, Sully, and Chloe finding the survivors of the Lost Fleet, freaking out about their teeth being black and saying that this treasure is cursed, like he normally would. But 10 to 1, he would probably opt out of the search of Shambhala at the same point Sully does. So, not much of a game changer. Would he be in Uncharted 3? Maybe, but I would say that with more doubt. If he were to be there, he would be in the same boat as Chloe and Cutter, there for the beginning and leaving around the same point, more than likely being spooked by Marlowe and Talbot. Uncharted 4 appearances? No, I don't see that happening. Maybe he might get a name drop like Cutter did, but that would be about it. As I mentioned earlier, I do like Eddie Raja. For a small minor character in the entirety of the Uncharted franchise, he is a standout and is memorable. Am I going to say he is underrated and underutilized? No. The role he had was fine and he made it work. But it is fun to have thought experiments where something else were to happen and see how things could turn out. Now tell me, what do you think of the what if? Do you like Eddie Raja? Would you like me to make more videos about Uncharted? Would you like me to see me tackle more what-ifs in general? Tell me in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.